Hi there, and welcome to this web lecture on social psychology. Do you know what the thing is we think about the most? Did you know that we have many biases that make us draw false conclusions? My name is Peter Ruiten, and today we will be talking about social cognition. This web lecture is split up in three different sections. In the first section, I will answer the question, what is social cognition? In the second section, I will use attributions and causal explanations people give to their own and others' behavior. Finally, I will ex explain the differences between heuristics and biases. I often ask people what the things are that they think about the most. And the answers that they usually give me are the following. Some people say that they think a lot about their free time or their holidays. Others tell me that they think a lot about school or exams or work. Yet another group of people tells me that they think a lot about alcohol or parties. And in all the groups of people where I, where I ask this question, there's at least one person who says that sex is the thing that we think about the most. There is, however, one thing that we think about more often than all of these things combined. And this gives us the answer to the question, what is social cognition? The thing we think about the most is other people. And therefore, social cognition focuses on thinking about people. Just turn on the TV on a random moment and you are likely to see one or more people talking about one or more other people. We humans, however, don't really like thinking a lot because thinking in itself takes effort. That is why we are referred to as cognitive misers. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we rely a lot on the automatic system. And you may remember the difference between automatic and deliberate systems from Rep Lecture 2. Our automatic thinking relies on so-called knowledge structures, which are organized packets of information that are stored in our memory. There are different types of these knowledge structures. The first one being schemas. Schemas represent substantial information about a concept, its attributes and relations with other concepts. The second type of knowledge structure is a script, which defines a situation and guides our behavior. A script is a structure that contains information about how people behave or should behave under certain circumstances. Knowledge structures could also be activated in various ways, one of which is priming. Priming is the activation of an idea or concept that enables related concepts or ideas to become more accessible. Another form of activating knowledge structures is by framing messages in different ways. Framing therefore refers to whether a message is presented in terms of possible gains or losses. Could you think of a way to frame the same message in different ways? When we talk about explaining our own behavior and that of other people, uh, we come to the concept of attributions. Attributions are causal explanations for behaviors. We use attributions to explain why we behave in certain ways. And for this, we can use internal attributions based on personality traits or external attributions based on situational factors. By doing so, we tend to make certain errors and biases. One of these is called the actor-observer bias. The actor-observer bias means that as an actor, we tend to attribute our own behavior more to situational costs, whereas as an observer, we tend to attribute another person's behavior more to internal reasons and costs. One specific instance of the actor-observer bias is what we call the fundamental attribution error. The fundamental attribution error is the tendency for an observer to underestimate um, situational causes when we see the uh, behavior of another and overestimate internal causes of this behavior. Heuristics are mental shortcuts that we use for making decisions. Some examples of these are the following. The representativeness heuristic states that our attribution of a behavior depends on a resemblance to a typical case. We tend to, for example, use stereotypes to explain people's behavior because a stereotype describes a, pers a typical person from a group. The availability heuristic states that we attribute causes of behavior based on the ease with which that attribution comes to mind. The simulation heuristic states that we attribute a cause of behavior based on how easy it is for us to simulate it. And finally, the anchoring and adjustment heuristic 
states that we use a starting point in our attribution and adjust from there. In addition to several heuristics, we also make use of biases. Biases state that we use case history information rather than statistical information. So we use the information from one case in order to make a behavioral decision. The book describes a lot of different biases, but I will only describe four of those today. These four are the confirmation bias, gambler's fallacy, the false consensus effect, and the false uniqueness effect. Confirmation bias states that we tend to search for information that confirms our, uh, our expectations. Gambler's fallacy states that we use um, knowledge from the past to make predictions for the future. The false consensus effect states that we overestimate the number of people who agree with us. And the false uniqueness effect states that we underestimate the number of people who share our most valuable traits. To recap, in this web lecture, I have provided an answer to the question, what is social cognition? We have seen that there are many different attributions and causal explanations that we can give for our own and people's behavior. And we have seen that we make a lot of errors and biases when we make behavioral decisions. That was all for today. Thank you for listening and hope to see you again soon.